Dog Gadgets. Live! Happy Friday! Bzzz. Wow. It's, it's, it, yay! It's Friday and we're full of bugs at browndoggadgets.com. Not because we left food out on our conference table overnight. That's how you get ants. That is. Uh, it's because we've got lots of cool, fun projects we're showing off today. These are things we've been working on uh, this week, posting up for um, summer camps, other groups we're working with. But we had a bunch of new projects and activities we're posting on our website that are awesome arts and crafts, science projects. Most of them are paper-based, but they range anywhere from simple to rather advanced, I guess advanced, solar and transistor-based uh, projects. As always, I'm Josh from browndoggadgets.com. And off to my right is uh, Pete, producer Pete. Hey there! Not just a sexy disembodied hand. Wow. He's also a person. That's true. It's true. But uh, we have a bunch of cool projects. As I mentioned these are, are templates you can find on our website. These are free activities, whether or not you ever want to touch our stuff. They're always up there for free. And they're great activities for classrooms, summer camps, after school programs, or even just parents at home trying to do stuff with kids as they're mm -hmm. stuck around uh, COVID. A lot, of, a lot of people aren't sending their kids to summer camp uh, this year. Staying so. home this summer. They are. So, these, yeah, these are all projects we're putting together for camps and after-school programs that are trying to get things going through COVID. So we thought we'd show them off since these are all pretty new things that are literally being posted right now by Andy, our curriculum writer, in another room here in our <laughs> office. He's posted them. <laughs> and we stole all, all the demos he's using for photography. So we're going to show these off and do these. Um if you want any supplies or whatnot, you can always get them from us or off Amazon, <laughs> rounddoggadgets.com. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> uh, but again, if you have your own supplies or materials, you can use lots of standard off-the-shelf um, science supplies, especially with your teacher. You probably have a lot of this stuff already. Uh, so you can use our templates and have fun with it that way. So let's switch to our wonderful overhead video camera. Overhead. Ta-da! Now I'm little Josh uh, in the corner. So uh, first and foremost, because I'm holding one of these little guys, is our new 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 version of our solar bug activity which is a vibrating uh project it's a uh, basically actually this is a version of the first thing we ever sold on our website like nine years ago uh, which was our solar cockroach uh and that was a soldering project and this is a nice little version that's paper craft non-soldering and very kid friendly and as you can see it's solar powered because it's not doing anything right now <laughs> Our studio lights don't do do anything. But, however, for those of you who want to see it in action, we do have a video from us testing this guy right here, amongst others, that we're going to throw up on screen. Let's roll this video. Roll that video, here Pete. Here we go. Let's see if this works. There you go. Yay. Yeah. Look at that. Flip screen. So that's uh, our solar bug trial in the wonderful sunlight, bright and sunny sunlight of Wisconsin. And, yeah, you can see they move along pretty well on a smooth surface. Uh, and they're, they're pretty simple. And, uh, yeah, well, yeah. They, they, they work pretty well. Much more uh, energetic this than our old bad. version of the solar yeah. bug, which was pipe fingers and uh, laser real, cut wood. Like this is, yeah, we've been kicking this idea around for ages and finally got around to doing it. So let's, let's get out of that. How do we get out of that? You got to click back to camera. Camera? You, you, which camera? Oh, that camera. Hey, there we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's Technical all difficulties. Yeah, it works. All we're right. live! <laughs> um, that's so you know we're live because we're having problems. No, uh... <laughs> So uh, this project here is essentially a solar panel with a, hard to see here, I uh, can see in there, a little silver guy is a self-sticking vibrating motor and some foam tape. And we have it all connected with a really ah. awesome nylon conductive maker tape, which is conductive on top and bottom, which means it's really easy to just add tape to connect the motor to the solar panel. A little two volt solar panels. Maker tape. Oh, uh, hashtag maker tape. It's awesome tape. Screw you, topper, copper foil. You're horrible. <laughs> Get out of the way for awesome <laughs> nylon. But then we use googly eyes on the bottom as our very slick um, points of contact, uh, which really help move it around and give a nice little vibrating, like little maraca, maraca sound. Yeah, so I like to call them googly feet. They're googly, googly feet. But uh, it's like, ah, I only got eyes for you, Pete. Wow. Uh. <laughs> uh, but they work really darn well. And the idea is here that the kids get templates from us or you can print them off. We have a bunch of these that we're making um, scorpions, spiders, butterflies, you name it. They decorate them, add on their solar aspect, and follow one of the lesson plans we have on uh, how to use these as a solar uh, tester in a classroom. The basic lesson plan we've been doing, I've been doing for like nine years with teachers is using these with different light sources to measure the output based on the vibration. So they can feel with their hand for heat, they can see with their eyes for brightness, and they can use this for the solar energy measurer. So this would be like a younger kid activity, that third, fourth, fifth grade. 
and they can see like hey incandescent bulb versus the sun or led light hot cold bright dim all that fun jazz and those are lesson plans we have up on our website right now we got a comment here from uh andrew wellas uh, rattle feet my dear that's what he calls them rattle feet, rattle feet. yeah there that's you our go. curriculum writer andy cool. who's, who's watching instead of Thank posting you. things on our <laughs> on our uh, check in the stream nothing Thank wrong with that uh but yeah so uh these work pretty darn well they'll be up and we'll be putting a bunch of different templates up as well um and having a kit available of this later on as well otherwise these are parts we put out with a bunch of different things already if you have like one of our origami circuits kits or you have little solar panels around from other things you just need like about a two volt to four volt somewhere in there with a vibrating motor and we, we recommend the self-sticking these are um and actually uh, here's one <laughs> but there we go there, there is go. a one yeah it's just it's a nice internal vibration so there's nothing spinning on the outside and it sticks to paper things and the best part is too if you really 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 hate your bug you can rip this off it's just held on <laughs> with foam tape and stick to something else since all the electronics are just on the solar panel which mm-hmm. also makes it really easy for testing test it before you stick it mm-hmm. um and it yeah it should just work fine but it's a really great little solar activity especially since most solar things are really darned expensive but we like doing solar with paper crafts just because it's super kid friendly here like those googly eyes on the bottom <laughs> but we post a bunch of these guys a couple different variations on, on all these templates and yeah color them stick them they're good so off to the side with you and along the same line speaking of solar we put together for one of our summer camps a super, super, super simple solar demo using a, another one of those two volt solar panels because they're really nice and lightweight and small and just a blinking red LED uh, as just a super, super simple solar circuit on paper. We're just attaching the uh, solar panel directly to the maker tape with a little loop of tape on the bottom, positive and negative coming off of here. Thanks, Pete. To our blinking LED. Again, it's not. No, no sunlight in, in our, our photography. We're room, indoors so. right now. We are. We are. Okay. Uh, but Oh, by the way, if you have any questions, please ask, because we're getting some random questions in coming in from people. So if you have questions, please throw them our way. We're happy to, uh, to Josh, answer. Josh, we have full to murmur back again saying hello. He's, I believe, outside the U.S., but he's viewing from across the Internet. Thank you, Internet folks. Yes, definitely. We're glad we can stream our wonderful mm-hmm. ones and zeros to you. But uh, And this is just a nice starting off point one to do with this for – kids using this basic activity then to light other things up because usually when we do these for camps they get a whole bunch of leds and other materials this is a this is the basic way it works add this to a different project now that you put together and we have a little andy or curriculum writer put together this nice little diagram with information and this should be up on our website as well pretty soon showing how to hook things together with the solar cell um fun factoid so most solar cells on the back side they got like little spots to solder onto uh on the back side you can't actually connect like conductive tape to it because uh, there's a nice little enamel over the top of that uh, to protect it from corrosion. It's a PCB. Uh, and if you're soldering onto them, no problem. That works just fine. However, if you're not soldering, you've got to scrape that enamel off with like a, a penny off. or something. Uh, usually there's some little silver dots off to the side that sometimes covered with a, a black fabric tape uh. or something else. Those are basically the, uh, the through hole solder point between the back side of the PCB and the front side with all the solar cells on it. And we connect to that because it's fine. Uh, but yeah, if you ever do anything with conductive tape uh, and especially our maker tape and solar panels, not the copper pads, unless you little penny, just scrape it off or something uh, like a lotto ticket. Uh, but look for those silver dots. Or I have some teachers who have soldered on like little wire leads off their solar panels and they just add tape to that just to make it a little easier <laughs> Uh, for their students as well but it just depends on what you're doing josh what's the size of that panel is it about 60 millimeters by 26 millimeters i'm gu- i'm just guessing is that <laughs> about the size of that my p it's almost as if you looked at the back of one and memorized how big it was yes i can see it on the card oh is it on the card yeah, oh it is it actually <laughs> <laughs> andy went really far That's away with those, uh, those things but yeah these are pretty small two volt about 40 ish mm-hmm. milliamps uh, which is enough to get like a vibrating motor or an LED going. This is a blinking red, so you could easily see in the sun that's blinking because um, LEDs in the sun kind of get washed out, especially when you need full brightness. But uh, they're pretty inexpensive, which is the best part about them, which yeah. is why we try to use those for lots of activities. And we can even get um, some different LEDs going on. You could cook a couple together in series or parallel to get a little more out of it, but we're just making an LED or a motor go. So yay. This is going to be up as a solar circuit under our advanced uh, paper crafts option at browndoggadgets.com. Um, and probably under our solar tab as well, cross posting things in our documentation source. 
But let's move on to even more fun paper stuff. Oh, yeah, thank you, Pete. He's just pressing a button now. He's really happy with his button pressing. Um, that's why he does sound effects so much. <laughs> so in addition to doing like some simple solar stuff, we also have to do some higher level stuff for in paper circuits. And our first approach is, well, paper circuits with regular components, what can we do with that? Mm -hmm. um, so we figured, let's just jump into the most fun thing of all, which are transistors, wow. solid state funness that is transistors. So we made a bunch of transistor-based circuits that we could uh, have kids easily put together and then use, in, again, for different activities. Uh, first and foremost, we went to like something we used to do ages ago as a kit. Uh, was a dark detecting circuit. Now, ages and ages and ages ago, uh, when we used to do a lot more solar stuff, we would use a version of this with a solar panel as the sensor to turn, uh, to basically turn the LED on and off. Either one, it's charging a battery, or two, turning LED on. Your simple outdoor garden light circuit. Literally, is the same thing you'd get if you had an outdoor garden light. Uh, and you have a lot of the same components. A nice LED, uh, light detecting resistor or solar panel, a battery power source, three volts, and then a little bit of circuitry, a transistor of some kind. Uh, and this, I don't think it's, I think my battery is dead already, but it totally does work. Uh, but a little light detecting resistor, put your finger over it, LED turns on, take it off, LED turns off. This is a very inefficient circuit. If anyone's like, hey, Josh, <laughs> that's a bad way of doing that circuit. You're wasting lots of power. I'm like, yes, yes, we are. But it's a project for children that works. And it's a simple uh, 2N3904. Again, folks, that's a 2N3904, the cockroach of transistors. You find <laughs> them in tons and tons and tons of stuff. They're great. If you get any kit, like any educational kit with transistors, you're going to have some of those in there. Uh, and yeah, just a very simple, simple formatted project uh, that you can make a dark detecting circuit on. And if you want to go further and, you know, add in other things, add in a solar panel and whatnot, there's tons and tons of examples out there of using like AA rechargeables or AAA rechargeables and a solar cell with the exact same circuit to charge and turn on light. Again, outdoor garden light in a very simple format. And this is a nice, very inexpensive, very easy thing to put together with uh, with our maker tape. Yay, maker tape. Maker tape. Oh, there, there's, there's the sound effects, which I can't hear. Uh, <laughs> but so, yeah, there we go. And I think my battery is gone because it's a super inefficient circuit. It's, it's always losing a little bit of power through here. But Josh, I think the cool thing here is, y you know, uh, most kids probably see those little pathway lights, garden lights, oh, yeah. you know, oh, at night it turns on, you know, so this... To them, it might be, you know, a magical black box. They don't know how it works, but this shows it's it's a very simple circuit. Oh, yeah. You can put it together yourself with some maker tape and a couple yeah. components. And I always recommend to teachers, too, if they're doing anything with solar, to go buy a couple of cheap garden lights from Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree. They're the ones, not anybody else. Dollar Tree, which are everywhere. No, I don't know. Um, Dollar Tree is great. As a dollar store, they have usually have a bunch of solar lights for a dollar. And they're very easy to take apart, typically, especially on the back side. You could crack one open, and it's a dollar. And you'll find your <laughs> single battery, and they're usually a single, like, 1.2-volt NICAD. They're really, really low amperage, like, super, 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 like, there's cheap. They, they are. There's not much power storage in there. A single LED and a little transistor setup, usually a four-pin. I don't know what it is exactly, but it's like a four-pin transistor, but it's a setup. And they use a solar panel as your sensor instead of an LDR here, like detecting resistor. Um, the nicer ones, you'll find nicer ones that actually can see the LDR on the outside of the, the case. Um, but yeah, the Dollar Tree ones are super cheap, super easy, and they're, just, look, there's nothing in here. There's really nothing in there. It's the same thing as this. And that's the best part. Like, you made this Dollar Tree. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. one more pitch for Dollar Tree is that, yeah, you can get that for a dollar. You can get other, like, electronic toys or things there for a dollar. And, you know, you can tear them apart. Oh, yeah. See how they're made. Um, even if it's great for kids, but even if you're an adult, you're like, I'm a maker, take it apart. And you're like, wow, they made some interesting choices here. Usually to make it as low cost oh, yeah. as possible. Uh, they have those yeah. little, those little solar, like, like dancing flowers are really yeah. fun to look at because it's a coil. It's a magnet, like a, a mm -hmm. fixed magnet and a coil of wire, a transistor, a capacitor, and a little tiny, like calculator solar cell, just a small yeah. amount of energy on that. Not even like a milliamp. It's less than a mm -hmm. milliamp. It just fills up, and when that then when it hits a certain point, the transistor kicks the power through. The coil makes magnetic field and pushes away, and that's how you get the dancing flower. And it's just, it's so simple. Um, oh, another Dollar Tree factoid, Pete. Mm. Grab yourself a Dollar Tree electric tooth electric toothbrush, yeah, which is just a big vibrating motor and a battery <laughs> holder with a toothbrush on the end, right? Uh, and then some batteries. 
uh, cut off the toothbrush part, zip tie that to like a scrub brush, uh-huh. add some big googly eyes, and you Ooh. have a gigantic bristle bot. Nice. And for $2, $2. Well, actually three if you buy batteries, well. uh, and some zip ties, you have a gigantic bristle bot, which is hilarious. There's a switch on that, on that toothbrush. There's a battery holder. Just the zip tie those puppies together. Don't even try to glue it. Literally zip tie. Wow. Um, yeah, hot glue doesn't actually hold it in place. But that's a really easy way of doing it without nice. taking it apart. I remember ages ago, like eight years ago, when there was a Radio Shack, that same motor that you could find, exact same motor um, you could find in the uh, toothbrush was like $5 at Radio Shack yeah. in the same strip mall in, uh, in here in Wisconsin. Yeah. And like dollar plus a battery holder i just it was one of the things like yeah for a classroom like we got a couple of those and did a couple projects because it's a nice it's a weird looking thing but it's a plastic case with a switch and a battery holder anyway so yeah. moving on next transistor thing next andy or creek Lombardi made up was this this is a capacitive touch sensor and it's gonna be kind of hard to see here with the studio lights you can kind of see it coming on yeah we see but it. there's uh, the third leg of the transistors on the bottom side and if you put your finger here or on the battery anywhere on this side and you touch that the LED will turn on like, oh, how are you doing that? It's just, wow. oh, magic. Like, ah, oh, whenever I, I sneeze, achoo, LED turns on. <laughs> but uh, whatever. Uh, You're a battery, Josh. Don't, don't, can't fool me. You're a battery. Pete, this isn't the Matrix where I'm a battery, <laughs> uh, although it was supposed to be for processing power. Anyway, movie factoids. That will move to the 90s from the 60s or wow. the 70s last time, 80s. <laughs> yes. Anyway, this is a fun little transistor circuit. Still the three, uh, 3904, uh, a resistor, battery, LED. It's a really simple look. I'm doing capacitive touch. This is what yeah. it is. We're just using our body to complete that circuit somewhere um, and activating the transistor. So it's a really simple, simple one to do. And it's again, it's you can make it, you can use it. It's simple, it's easy to understand, and you can do this, uh, add this to a lot of different projects. Yeah. As a very simple light up or, you know, put a motor to buzz or um, some sort of like piezo speaker to make a sound effect. But yeah, little card guy. Again, simple, simple analog circuit with a transistor. Transistor is not just for radios these days, Pete. Wow. I know. Yeah. I like my radios with tubes, so what can I say? Yes, <laughs> the tubes are like the warmer sounds, of really. Tube. You know? yes. yes, because it gets so hot in there and takes like 20 minutes to warm up. Yeah, <laughs> tube radios, you turn those puppies on, it takes like 15, 20 minutes before they actually really Does. warm up. Yeah. Enough to, to have a good sound. Uh, speaking of things that uh, warm up, let's talk about water. Wow. Water. So this is another circuit. Oh, sad trombone. Oh, oh God. Oh, Pete's sound effects. The crowd enjoys that one. Uh. So this is another simple circuit with a transistor. Three transistor projects. Okay. Same same transistor. We've got a couple of uh, leads coming off of here. Now, we added a couple of uh, uh, tongue depressors, popsicle, popsicle sticks. Popsicle There we go. Tongue depressors. Yeah. <laughs> uh, popsicle sticks on here just for some rigidity. Or you could also just have the maker tape go off to a paper clip as well. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I like to do on mine when I have a long piece of maker tape. Just double it over on itself with a paper clip at the end. Then it's nice and strong. Uh, but this is a moisture sensor. So when mm. water comes in contact with both of these, a little bit of electricity flows across and LED turns on. Uh, dim, but it, it works. It's a nice, basic, simple analog circuit for that. And we have another version here. And Andy made his, this Ooh. so that you could... Uh, if you roll it up, you can make a nice little tube to stick in like your plant or something. Oh, no, there's moisture in my plant, which you think would be a good thing. Um, and a cup of water. I'm pretty sure the LED is too dim. Yeah, it's too dim to show up on camera. But it is turning on here, just very, very dim on here. Uh, it totally works. Yeah. Uh, but just, yeah, it works way better. We had a, our conference room was lights turned out. Yep, turns on, just dim uh, with that water. I'm sure if you added like salt or something in there, a little more conductivity. What if you used alcohol? Would that be more conductive or less conductive? Are you drinking it? Well, I don't want to get into that. Uh, very true. Okay. This is a live streaming for children, Pete. <laughs> Sorry, children. Uh, yeah, it's a very, again, simple analog circuit, very similar to the capacitive touch circuit mm-hmm. uh, and everything else we've done here. But we are. Oh, is that turning on there every so briefly? Maybe. No, I don't think so. Anyway, yeah. Also going to be up on there with a little bit of explanation activity. Um, you kind of finally see a much nicer version of this on some Arduino sensors. You get those moisture mm-hmm. sensors, which yeah. are two, usually a PCB with two prongs on it, just physical copper prongs, yep. um, a resistor on there. There's not a whole lot to those mm-hmm. uh, for your Arduino to measure moisture, but those are that's a fun thing to do. Moisture sensor for a microbit or Arduino. Josh, we've got a comment from Suzette. I don't know if you know Suzette. She has a request. Oh. 
Oh yeah, we assigned to Suzette today about uh, live streaming. Oh, uh, wonderful. Fun stuff. She wants to do some live streaming with some teachers, so we gave her some advice on our wonderful live streaming setup nice. and how we spent days, days, Pete, building days. this brick background. Yeah. Yes, brick. They don't tell brick. you the brick background is the hardest part of any live streaming setup. That's true. You have to build that mortar. Finding the bricks. I mean, these are all vintage bricks, Pete. Yeah, they are. So Cream, vintage. Cream City, some of them, right? Milwaukee. Milwaukee's nickname is the Cream City. And yeah. I totally, at one point, knew why. It's not an obvious. Uh, it's because of the bricks. <laughs> it's because the bricks are cream colored. <laughs> yes. Um, we have a lot of cream colored stuff. Fun facts. Milwaukee, it's a nice city. Come, come around here sometime yeah. when we, nobody has COVID. Have a pretzel, some cheese, <laughs> a beverage of your choice. Um, and let's get on here with stuff. What else we got? Oh, here. Real life example of transistor things. So we took that uh, dark detecting circuit, ta-da, and made a really cool activity with it uh, for uh, this constellation activity kind of setup we were doing. We want to do some fun stuff with like phases of the moon, night sky, with simple circuitry, adding in some astronomy and circuitry together, crossing the scientific uh, disciplines, mm -hmm. uh, but trying to bring, you know, bring things, some things together. And I know a lot of people when they were younger have made the classic like poke holes with a nail in a tin can, light it up, yeah. like a constellation. Well, we want to do that with our circuitry and some constellation fun stuff. So we took this dark detecting circuit, yay, and uh, we were like, hey, we can make a nice little diagram here for different types of the western sky, eastern sky, blah, blah, blah. Because depending on where you are on the planet at any given time, northern, southern hemisphere, uh, you get different constellations of sky. And Andy has a whole lesson he's writing up on this too, by the way. He can do a much better job than I could explaining this. This sounds like science. It is, Pete. Nice. And then, a little cone. You'd probably want to make this out of um, like heavy, con like dark construction paper. Mm -hmm. We had like black construction paper. This would work perfect. Uh, we just had some uh, dark paper um, there and just tape it together. Poke your holes, and you've got yourself a little constellation maker. And dark detecting circuit means when uh, our battery. Oh, it's turning on slightly. Batteries are kind of dead, and it's very bright in here. Uh, put this over the top here of your uh, of your LED. One or two LEDs. When it gets dark, it turns on, and you have little constellations you can see, and you can simulate Earth turning. The very simple circuit, fun little activity. You're building something, and you're learning about constellations. And so we have some fun lesson plans we're putting together for that right now. It's like a paper planetarium kind paper of. Paper planetarium. There you go, Pete. That's what you're they call welcome. It. All right. Paper planetarium. There you go. That's why Pete gets, gets the, the big bucks over here, Do not just I? pushing buttons, flashing, flashing overlays. <laughs> Anyway, so this is one of the activities we did with that. Uh, and along that same line, we also uh, have... Uh, Hold on there. And, and we've got a, a viewer here with a tip on making that uh, black cone. Spray painted it black. Oh, wow. that's our curriculum writer, Andy. Again, is still watching. Nice. Andy, get back to work. He's, <laughs> he's like 20 feet away from here. Just to, to throw things somehow at you. Uh, black construction paper is probably easier for most parents than spray yeah. painting paper. Uh, or just any sort of like dark, heavy construction paper, or if you have, happen to have cardstock around, like darker, heavier cardstock, you make things just blocking out as much light as possible from coming through the paper, mm -hmm. uh, and then you, of course, poking holes. Uh, Andy also made this really nice phases of the moon uh, that is a little hangy, like a little hangy mobile, so you can just hang it up and it'll slowly turn, and you get the different phases of the moon. And if you use again like a um, a heavy backing on this. Uh, and we printed this off, but you can uh, draw your own or make your own for off the template. Uh, LEDs on the inside. When it turns on, we have a little paper uh, switch tab here. Uh, it lights up, which Ooh. you can't you can't see because of all the ah. studio lights. We have a lot of light up things that are hard to see in here. <laughs> uh, we should take it a video uh, beforehand. Uh, but it looked nice. It looks rather nice coming through here. Face of the moon, fun kid project, and it'll just slowly spin for you, so you can you get that nice little. Uh, uh, very simple animation aspect to it with the yeah. floor on here. It, I was rather surprised how nice it looked when I was just spinning in our dark conference room. Uh, <laughs> just like, why am I in this dark conference room on a Friday? It's because people are showing me light up things that need a lot of darkness. But no, it's yeah. a nice, again, an activity about Face of the Moon that Andy's putting together for one of the camps we're working with, uh, with our constellation and some of the other uh, nighttime sky things. Oh, and we actually have a third space-based thing as well, oh. which Pete made. Yeah. Anyway, so... This will be a template on our website as soon as Andy uploads it, as opposed to watching this video, Andy. Now, no, Josh, I'm going to get around your your studio light issue here. Watch this. Look at that. There's a little photo. Oh, Pete, look at you. You what came so prepared yeah. to this live stream. <laughs> so you can see that's in the dark what it looks like. 
Yeah, and Pete, now Pete you can so show him what it looks like in the light. This is the fourth version of this activity. <laughs> like last week, we showed off. We had like a, a two different card versions. No, three, three different card versions. There four. Four card versions? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Because there was what? There was the flat black. There was black two and that white. you could color yourselves, yeah. and then two that okay. were colored. You can print out. We do like a, like a flat version, just a simple card yeah. that's flat. There's also one where you cut out the rocket and it stood up a little bit, so it's a little mm -hmm. 3D card effect. Again, simple way of adding like a little three dimensional look yeah. to it. And this is a wearable version, so you could wear your rocket ship around and be like uh, Elton John. You could, yeah. Be the rocket man. Or if you're going to like a rocket launch, NASA, SpaceX, wear this. And there you go. And it's a cute, it looks really good, especially in lower lights. We do a lot of things. Looks that, like that. Yeah, that look yeah, really nice when like. A great look. It's not dark, but it, uh, like dusk ish. Mm -hmm. I feel like teaching conference with light up name badges yeah. and stuff like this always looks well because teachers go out and wear these actually out on the town or yeah. uh, in the hotel or conference center. And it's like, oh, look at all these cool name tags for things they made at our booth. Right. Um, to wear around. It's great advertising. Here's, here's the pieces oh, so you can show them that too. So uh, we, we have a. Pete print, printed this out on like uh, our cards, on nice card stock, mm -hmm. um, on our nice, nice, nice printer. Um, so it, it comes out really well. Uh, doing this on like eight and a half by eleven, like a standard printer at home, color it in. But I would suggest using like sixty pound or greater cardstock. Yeah. That's kind of my go-to sixty pound. It's thick, but not like it's not going to cause issues in a standard printer. And if you don't have thick paper, I found too, you can you can kind of glue it down to another sheet at least, get twice the thickness. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and Pete did a really nice thing here too, where there's actually an on and off switch on this. So he used a a jumbo paper clip here uh, from. Our it might be a Harper. regular paper clip. Oh, it's regular. My yeah, bad. I used to everything being jumbo in the yeah. warehouse. <laughs> uh, but the paper clip holds down a little paper switch on here, which turns it on and off. Yeah, there's a diagram on here. Oh, yes. Shows. It's literally it's a nice Pete, <laughs> Pete making very nice directions on yeah. diagrams. Well, uh, to make the stuff easy, you know? Yes, indeed. So we have yeah. a red and a blue LED on here. You could switch it up. We like the red coming out yeah. the back. Uh, so like the flame of the rocket. But you could take the same approach, this very same approach on your own. Because it's such a, it's a very simple diagram, very mm -hmm. simple way. You make a UFO, make like, you know, a space shuttle. We, yeah. we just went with your classic, like Buck Rogers-esque, uh, you know, cylinder rocket ship. Yeah. Um, because everyone knows what it is. They do. And it looks like that when it lights up. It does. It looks good. It has a nice yeah. glow to it. And yeah. uh, now, fun stuff like this. I mean, uh it and there's a color way. color inversion too. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Lift up all the papers. I'm sorry, look at the papers. There you go. Yeah, no, uh, no. papers. So again, you print this out, you do your circuit, and then there's a yeah. black one. You can color that color yourself your or decorate it. Add some glitter. Whatever. You no, glitter. Nope. no glitter. No glitter. <laughs> and they can. You, We're not going to do it here. Glitter is the worst. By glitter, I meant sawdust. Sawdust. Yeah, sorry. No, I Pete. Metal it. shavings. Really small metal shavings. Josh, I saw filing. edible glitter yesterday. How does that even work? It was at a child's birthday party. I was wondering, probably like cupcakes. Um, yeah. Mm. yeah. No, no. glitter is just like the bane of every teacher's existence. It is. Uh, <laughs> Maker tape's better. Yes, where can you find all this glitter? stuff? Browndoggadgets.com. Cool. Where where can they where can they find us? Oh yes, if you're still watching this, thank you, people. We try to put on live streams like three four days a week. We were really busy this week with some uh, big summer camp orders, so we didn't do as many, but. If you want to stay involved and check out the cool things we're doing, like we're going to post some uh, next week, start posting some social media stuff on this because this just yeah. kind of all came together here this week when, between doing stuff for a camp and getting resources going. We're posting this up. Otherwise, our website, browndowgadgets.com, we have all these things and far, far more as free templates, activities, directions, lesson plans, and videos. And even though <laughs> no one's in school, we're still pumping out activities for camps and organizations because those yeah. are still going on or people want to do things at home. For instance, I keep pointing out to people, we have like five, five, five full days five, yeah. of simple circuitry lesson plans on our website. So it's like half an hour to 45 minutes per lesson, like parallel versus series circuits, switches, like they're nicely put together lessons designed for a parent and a kid at home and using maker tape, LEDs, and, and paper, and scissors. And now we have, we actually have like five, I think, transistor activities as well now. Um, I think, I'm trying to remember, we have a couple other things up there, I think, already. But we have like another four or five days worth of advanced paper circuits as well, transistors, solar cells. So you could have like two full weeks of like half an hour to 45 minutes electronics activities on paper and cover transistors, resistors, circuits galore switches solar panels and you and you don't need 
you don't need a, a drill press, or a laser cutter, or even a soldering iron, right? You like sell construction paper some, some and some scissors, scissors and some glue and tape, maybe. Yeah, very that, simple that's stuff. That's my go to thing, for, yeah. always the go to thing for uh, cheap and easy classroom or home activities because it's just. You can do it. And when you're done, like, hey, you know what? We've, we've done this. You want to do something fun now? You, you know, half an hour of doing your learning. Here, let's make a fun rocket ship. Let's yeah. make a vibrating, angry Dixie Cup robot. That's right. Great. Of which, he's angry. I think my, oh, my so teeth angry. has lost the stickiness because it's been uh, sitting <laughs> we've upward. Been, we've been pulling that on and off. Yeah, uh, for a long time. It was just going. Anyway, you can do that or make your solar bug. Yeah. And that's the nice part about it. You can have some fun with it, too. And we keep putting up fun templates. Some of them a little weirder than others, uh, but a lot of them are, are very nice, nice, fun, easy activities that are, do have a lesson planner point to them. Yeah. Um, although our, our, our St. Patrick's Day card with Patrick Stewart on there, the point was, we love Patrick Stewart. Well, right. And that, that, was, that, was, that was a Pete one you did. You made that one. I, I did do that. We, we have a very nice Indiana Jones uh, Valentine's Day card. That was yeah. Andy with a beating heart. With the, yes. From the Temple of Doom, which as we all know, is the the number one Indiana Jones movie that features monkey brains? Yeah, I, well, sure. And, and snakes. Uh, All right. Anyway, so I think that's it. Uh, Pete, no, we have a video from our friend. Oh shoot! Alex. I totally yeah. forgot. Oh my How god! How could you oh. forget? Sorry, allergies are killing me here. It's ragweed. Uh, what is it? Ragweed. We have uh, cotton wood, and uh, like everything else that's freaking growing out there. Anyway, right. so I guess we had Alex from Hackster.io. Yeah. Yeah, which is a nice yesterday. Uh, like user posted like project website. Mm -hmm. We occasionally post some of our bigger projects on there. It's kind of I think I guess like Hackster is more like an Arduino based kind of programming based. Yeah, it's like, it's a wide variety, but it, yeah, it's electronics yeah, it and stuff. Mostly. Yeah, it was like like instructables.com is such a wide range of everything from oh, cooking everything. stuff and arts and crafts yep. to to make your own you know planet killing robot. Um, but uh, so Alex was on yesterday, and she was trying to make a uh, make a paper craft using an Arduino, and she was having some minor technical difficulties, and so she was nice enough to finish up that really cool project, uh, and uh, paper craft robot thing. Uh, there we go. And uh, she sent us a video of that this morning, so we're gonna show that video because Alex is nice enough to put it together yeah, for us. I can roll that. Roll that video, Pete. Today on Brown Dog Gadget's live stream, I used their Maker Tape so to build a tiny uh, little emotion spot controlled by an Arduino uh, Nano 33 BLE to the sense. Arduino, which is hooked and up chirp. to an LED with some Maker Tape to change the personality the of it, so different words equal different colors, mm -hmm. which is sadly uh, being discontinued. It was just a discontinued. very simple origami Head on like over to their site to hear more, and I hope uh, you find it inspiring. <laughs> And so there's like a minor technical difficulties. That's a, it, one of the yeah. new Arduino Nanos that came out last year so, that was wireless on it. There we go. The BLE is a Bluetooth low energy. Yeah, connected she, with Maker Tape. There we yeah, go. Yeah, and she put the tape into the. Uh, yeah, she just like rolled it into the tape there, and just right. stuck it through the hole. Yeah, uh, which we've never done before because <laughs> our boards tend to have like big Lego holes on yeah. them. So it's enough space to run the tape over the top. Right. Because they, they they're not close, uh, but those are close together for our like 2.8 millimeter pitch pin headers, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, just roll at the end, stuck it through there. It worked really well. Like, we learned something new. You can yeah. totally do that. Uh, I was kind of like, oh, how is she going to go that? I don't, I don't, <laughs> uh, good for, for her. But yeah, it's a really cool activity. I think she posted it up on Hackster as well today. Yeah. Uh, Hackster.io. But anyway, follow Alex, Alex, follow Alex on Twitter if you like technology things and fun makery things because she is always posting tons and tons of stuff yeah. on Twitter. Yeah. Um, and just really, really cool stuff and really good interactions as well with other cool makers out there. I always try to like watch like who is she talking to because usually like if she keeps talking to somebody, they're they're worth following because uh, she tends to know a lot of people. Uh, and she's, she's really like enthusiastic and just kind of happy to be making stuff, and it just oh, yeah. gets you excited about uh, about doing things. Well, and she had like the the cool. Uh, she had like a couple of like a. Uh, like robot friends, yeah, like companion robots, ro like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, 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 like a, well, she had Archimedes. There's Archimedes from the original Clash like of the Titans. Owl. Yeah, the owl. The owl. Right, right. If you watch the original, like, was it 70s Clash of the Titans? There's the, the Archimedes, the robot oh, owl, yeah, mechanical, yeah. mechanical owl. That, that's cool. But she has like a 3D printed blue one that that's interactive that has some machine learning connected with it. That's really kind of cool as well. And she was she was wearing that during our conversation, which is cool. And oh, actually, Archimedes is also in the new Clash of the Titans that came oh, out a few years back yeah. as a as a random throwaway kind of like cameo. 
like they, they like, like pick it up like what's this and throw it to the side oh no i know i like oh yeah. but that was that's great uh, original clash of titans great stop motion animation yeah so there's our 70s movie reference i, I watched history. that maybe five or six years ago and again my favorite part was the little mechanical Oh, well, yeah. he's, he's awesome. Good old stop motion animation. Yeah. Uh, good, good stuff. Uh, them, them are the California Raisins. Uh, <laughs> Clash of the Titans. Jason the Argonauts. Sure. Well, Je- okay. uh, Argonauts, yes. Jason, no. That's just always my... Yeah, <laughs> right. I'm, not, I'm not a fan of Jason. Okay. Argonauts, All yes. All right. Okay. But anyway, that's enough of this live stream because we've really devolved into like 70s movie references. Yeah, that's where we go our cue to end the stream. But hey, check out these projects. All these things are, are either up or going up on our website today or Monday. Uh, but we got a bunch more projects for posting as well, as well as kicking away at more of our online Arduino-based curriculum and more fun stuff with our Lego-based, that's always Lego-based, crazy circuits parts. Yeah. What do we got happening next week? Next week, we are putting things in the mail. No, we're working. <laughs> <laughs> it's paperwork. Do we, any, do we have any guests lined up for next no, week? Not, no. No, I don't. Because do I think we I've gone through one? my initial list of guests at this point. All right. Uh, I've got people like, yeah, we'll totally come on. But scheduling-wise, it's always rough. What, what are the criteria for a guest? Well, usually somebody who's involved with the maker community. I've been reaching out to other businesses we know because we always hang out and chat with business owners and like maker people connected with uh, the industry at maker fairs, teaching conferences. Mm-hmm. So like, who's interesting, who I know has cool things to show off. Yeah. Um, they're always working on new projects um, and, you know, who's probably willing to like do a little self-promotion too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if, you know, makers are out there, they want to show off something, we're happy to bring you on. Uh, especially if you you know do a lot of stuff and post a lot of stuff, it's nice to have people come on and just explain their things. I mean, we know Ada Fruits. What is it? Uh, f- is it Tuesday or Wednesday? They was uh, a the, great live stream. Yeah, right? yeah. Is it Ask an Engineer? Maybe? Yeah, or, or, or they the have show, like, and show and Tell. Show and Tell. Yeah, uh, that's great. Ada Fruit does a great job with that. Um, but we just like having some fun people on, like yeah. we, people we know or people we like their stuff. And if you now, have like now, Josh, I think on Show and Tell, the guests get you know just a few minutes. Oh, we'll give you like a half we'll an hour to sit here and chat yes. with us. We had yeah. Helen on for like over yeah. an hour. She's, like, an she's hour. getting her project going. Yeah. She was all the way in, in was it Berlin at like 10 o'clock at night? Yes, her I time. Think so, yeah. We're like, how, you're a lot of energy for being in Berlin like that late at night mm-hmm. on a weekday working on a project that was just having uh, part conflicts. Uh, that was fun. But we're, yeah. we're going to have people on and just chit chat. We had ten, uh, Ken from Tiny Circuits, Matthew from yeah. Squishy Circuits on. Um, just. Should the guest be using our, our stuff, our maker oh. tape right now? They can just I, make anything cool. A lot of people we just sent maker tape too, so they they were like, Oh, we'll use the yeah. maker tape and stuff because okay. you know we're talking with you, sure. I think a couple of people just like like I'll just make a new project randomly. So we nice. you know, that's where a few weird technical things yeah. uh, popped up. But you know, I don't care. We have something cool to show off. I can't from tiny circuit show off like their tiny T V. It's a little tiny like yeah. run video clips on the little tiny that's TV cool. like a model well it's like a model dollhouse sized <laughs> TV that works yes. running video clips which is so cool and Ken built one um, on there like I don't, I don't care we just like to have people show off cool things and see yeah. cool things and chat with people because I guess you just have a camera and Skype and which is like everybody these days yeah uh, but yeah cool beans hey if someone actually wants to email us we're happy, but I'm reaching out to a few more people, seeing who's up. But this is kind of our busy season, too. This is when summer camps and schools are trying to order or use their budget up. So we get a lot of orders all at once right now. Yeah. And with COVID, it's a lot of like, we need custom things because <laughs> they're all going home versus being done in the camp setting. Oh, now. Hey. This thing just randomly started working. I don't know why. Okay. That was kind of scary. It's probably a, uh, probably a, a signal. I was startled. So we usually are. I am. All, All right. right. For that. Well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go have a have a Dr Pepper. Okay. And fill out paperwork. Great. Yay, paperwork. We'll roll those credits, I guess. Then. Well, thanks for watching. As yeah. always, brown.gadgets.com. Our resources, parts, whatnot are there. We always like when people check our stuff out and say nice things about us. But follow us at these wonderful spots. It's always yeah. Brown Dog Gadgets, just on all the usual. Leave us comments, questions. Seriously, leave us comments. We we love or share us if you use our stuff or make a cool yeah. project. Share it with us. We love sharing. Like. So and so made this cool thing. Check it yeah. out. Yeah. Because we're bad at social media. So <laughs> just like share these things. Oh. Should we do, should we do like, if you like this, smash that subscribe button. Smash it. Yeah. Okay. I anyway, mean, bye everybody. Credits. Thanks for watching. Happy Friday. Have a good weekend. All right. Thanks for watching. Please visit browndoggadgets.com for parts, projects, and curriculum. Follow us on social media at Brown Dog Gadgets. Check out our live streams at Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. We'll see you next time.